you for joining uh, the next session of embedded software testing in it two series so we are almost in the end of uh, this uh, second unit with a couple of sessions uh, we will try to wrap it up and uh, we are more focusing on the embedded software testing uh, the white box uh, testing uh, aspects and the techniques uh, we will uh, study about uh, the white box testing uh, techniques in more details and uh, in continuation of the, the earlier sessions today we will study about the branch condition testing branch condition combination testing uh, if possible modified condition testing in the lc saj and ncdc okay so before that we'll just uh, touch base on the previous session where we had uh, gone through a table of a special coverage analysis or structural coverage types basically this is what is used for structural coverage analysis structural coverage analysis or SCA is very important uh, uh, analysis method that they use it for uh, industries like uh, aerospace where uh, the analysis need to be provided to the manufacturers that is uh, like uh, aerospace industries so manufacturers such as uh, Boeing, uh, <coughs> Airbus, uh, Bombardier, etc. Okay. And uh, we started uh, the white box uh, testing technique with the statement testing. Uh, the coverage uh, we cover the statements that are in the code, and uh, we also learnt about software instrumentation, which does uh, the intrusive hooks in terms of printf or the marks which are required within the code so that uh, the coverage will be traced it's like a tracing mechanism is called software instrumentation since uh, the code base is uh, huge so we cannot afford to have it manually so there are a number of tools that are used for software instrumentation uh, like vector cast ldra rtrt etc with the help of that instrumentation we run the unit testing uh, statement coverage and the coverage will give in terms of the percentage if the percentage is not 100 percent we will do a manual analysis of the gaps and the gaps could be uh, in terms of our decisions also so in that case what we do branch and decision coverage we will take care where uh, the coverage is done with the help of uh, total number of executions divided by total number of decisions you multiply by two because two times it has to be uh, the decision box need to be analyzed why because there are two outcomes of the decision box that is the diamond box it could be true or it could be false <coughs> and in continuation of the white box testing we have gone through the data flow testing where the variables of the data objects are analyzed in terms of the flow and every data that are used or the objects that are used will need to be analyzed and tested here the data object types could be d k u uh, used could be it is used in the calculation or used in the predicate. So, an object is defined when it is appearing in the data declaration or again any value or it has been opened a file has been all opened that is also called as a, an object and if the memory using a variable is allocated be dynamically or uh, using constants or pre allocation mechanisms. So, this data object types are used for data flow testing, where we will uh, segregate different types of data in different columns, such as definition, CUs, PUs, CUs is a calculation purpose. You can see X, Y, W, and Z in this uh, example the code is used as a CUs or calculation use whereas PUs or the predicate use is Z and Y you can see if as a bracket within that Z is less than Y is being used so it itself is a predicate uh, value directly within the bracket so that is why it is called as PUs all this data will be observed and analyzed in terms of data flow testing it should be tested against the intended functionality or the specification of the system under test. So, if there are gaps between the paths 
in the statements and the branch or the decision the data flow will uh, augment it in terms of strategies that can happen. So, each of these lines of code having the data objects will be analyzed and with using different values for example, x and y uh, as per the specification can take a value between 0 to 10, we know that how we can provide the inputs from 0 to 10 uh, with the help of our equivalence class and boundary value analysis. Also, we need to consider the if condition below, so that uh, it is satisfied it could take the path within the if or it could take the path within the else. So, all these gaps will be analyzed with the help of data flow testing. And next is the branch condition testing, which we will study today. <coughs> so, okay, what is the branch condition testing? Branch condition testing uses such model of the source code which counts out decisions and the individual Boolean operands. We know Boolean operands such as less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, etc. So, the decisions coming out of that are tested with the help of branch condition testing. A decision is a feasible statement which can transfer control to another statement depending upon the logic of the decision statement. That means, decision is having a logic having the Boolean operands and as a result of that the control can be transferred to different statements or a single statement depending on the logic that is being applied within the decision statement. And a decision condition is a Boolean expression which is estimated to determine the result of a decision. So, decision basically is a condition right. So, it will have the Boolean expression in terms of greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to or equal to etcetera. So, that will decide basically the result of the decision whether to go into one control or one set of statements or it should take another set of statements. So, basically these decisions are used in loops and selections. So, loops you know it could be a while one sorry not while one while loop or for loops or do while likewise we have based on the language constructs we have different loops similarly selections in terms of cases we know that. So, these decisions are implied within this type of uh, statements. We will see in more detail how branch condition testing uh, is taken care ok. So, in terms of branch condition testing uh, test case design aspects how we need to have a test case design taken care. ok. So, before that ok. So, 100 percent condition coverage means that uh, test data here the coverage is also same way what how we are going to do it, but 100 percent coverage here means that the data will ensure that every condition that is executed at least once during the testing condition coverage uh, that will include also the branch condition. So, do not get confused with the branch of decision condition here the conditional coverage in terms of the uh, Boolean operands and the expressions part of the decisions will be tested. And uh, uh, in terms of designing uh, the branch condition testing, test cases should be designed to exercise individual Boolean operand values within decision condition. For every test case, this should be clarified before we do the design. We should have an input to the component that is part of the decision condition. For each decision estimated by the test case identification of the Boolean operand to be exercised by the test case and its value expected result of the test case. So, these three 
should be clear for the tester before he designs. So all the Boolean operands within the decision condition will have to be exercised. Operand values such as you can see an expression. Let us start with a for loop only, it will be easy for i into 0 to i less than 50 i plus plus. And if a less than b and do these these things statement etc will be multiple statements as well as a function block also would be called depending on the nature of the program. So here we have a for loop this block will be executed how many times 0 to less than 50 means 50 times it will be executed where the index is i. So obviously the index will have an incrementer or the incrementer is already there here based on the index uh, certain conditions uh, are used and you can see on the right hand side along with this it is very important to have this right, right hand side expression also to be satisfied or evaluated before the block is getting executed. So we know that statements individual statements we have a statement for it and uh, we know that there is a block if uh, a less than b we are going to do it and uh, if true this will be done if false this will not be executed and now since we have a less than b as a condition branch condition we need to evaluate all the aspects of a as well as b in order to test the boolean operands. So the boolean operands it could be logical expression such as uh, or and etc. So basically the tester needs to understand what are the inputs to this block that needs to be taken care. For each decision estimated by the test case identification of the boolean operand to be exercised by the test case. That means what are the actions that that block is going to do for each of these boolean operand expression in terms of inputs will be exercised and also the value that it carries out in terms of the execution. And of course what is expected out of each conditions while it is getting executed so that is also very important to understand. So that is about uh, branch condition uh, testing and uh, next one we have is slight modification in the branch condition, branch condition combination testing. Here what we do branch condition combination testing is a model of the source code which recognizes decisions and the individual boolean operands within the decision conditions that means there could be decisions within the operand itself boolean operand itself. So that also will be exercised so whereas in case of branch condition alone what we do we take care of the decisions and the individual boolean operands that is all here we take care of decisions and the individual boolean operands within the decision conditions. So we have decisions the decisions also will have a lot of uh, uh, boolean operations or expressions or operands part of the decisions that also will be exercised this will be a rigorous thing basically. So that is why it is called as a branch condition combination testing. A decision is feasible statement which can transmit control to another statement we know that it depends on the logic of the decision statement that means 
how the logic is going to be derived based on that decision is feasible uh, decision is called as a feasible step <coughs> A decision condition is a Boolean expression which is estimated to define the result of a decision. It means it is a condition basically, Boolean expression condition which is estimated to define the result of a decision. That means the Boolean expression will drive the values in such a way that the decision outcome will be known. Normal decisions are found in loops and selecting, same as here. We have a combination of that uh, uh, Boolean operands within the decision condition are tested with the help of this. So, each of these Boolean operands need to be tested for the variables that it is uh, taking care. Okay. So, test case design how we are going to do for branch condition combination is as per below. Test cases should be designed to exercise combinations of Boolean operand values within decision conditions. For every test case, these should be clarified. The inputs to the component for every decision estimated by the test case identification of the combination of Boolean operands and their values, the expected result of the test case. So, it is similar to the branch condition testing. But in addition, we have a combination of the Boolean operands within the decisions, the all that need to be excised. So, that is the purpose of branch condition combination. Okay. The next one is about modified condition testing. So, what does the modified condition testing do? Modified condition decision testing uses such model of the source code which recognizes decisions, outcomes, and the individual Boolean operands within the decision conditions. Here, additionally, we have outcomes also very important. That means the output. So, what sort of outputs the spec or the spec or the function that is expected? So, based on the need of that, we are going to test it. How we are going to test it is with the help of all the decisions. That means decisions individual Boolean operands within the decision conditions and the outcomes of the result that is also a deciding factor for modified condition testing. So, we are going to have a <coughs> all these uh, possible combinations in terms of modified condition statement. Addition is feasible statement which can transmit control to another statement, it depends of on the logic of the decision statement. Again the logic is very important here based on how and what are the values that we are going to drive for the logic, it is going to decide the output, decision output as well as the Boolean operand within the decision conditions. So, a decision condition is a Boolean expression which is estimated to define the result of a decision, normal decisions are found in loops and selecting problems. So, at the end of the loop we expect some result and the result we want as per the specification and that result we want to achieve can be done with the help of such values which can be driven within the Boolean expression part of the decision conditions. <coughs> that is how modified condition testing is taken care. Maybe we will touch base modified condition with decision coverage in detail with respect to DO once and B process which is followed in the aerospace industry. Test case design aspects. Test cases should be designed to show that Boolean operands within a decision condition may be independently influence the result of the decision. That means you need to understand here. Suppose variable A and B are used to derive C, C is suppose a result. So, <coughs> modified condition is such that independency need to be verified, that means because of A I am going to get the result in C and because of B 
and keeping as constant we are going to get the c as a product so we have two parts already so like this we will have multiple conditions and boolean expressions having the number of variables and the logic but in all the cases we need to measure the independency it is very important independency need to be verified so that is what the modified condition is going to be helpful suppose a is having a some value like some value say 0 and uh, sorry 1 let us say and b is uh, equal to 0 so what will happen a and b will again become 0 which could result in something for c some result 1 let us say similarly here we have proven that when b has become 0 c the result of the operation will have an impact on the output similarly when a is 0 b is any value 1 2 3 whatever it is but the impact is due to a because a ended with any of the value within the b will result in a known value it could be result 1 or result 2 depending on whatever the expression it has so a and b we will drive independent one we will keep it as a constant like b as said so we will keep once one next time two next time three ah, sorry we will keep a as constant next time we will verify or vary the b in terms of 1, 2, 3, etc. So, the independency for B is being verified. So, that is how we are going to have it. So, ultimate aim is to see that the independence is achieved because of one path or one input, the decision condition is going to vary. So, that is what it means. This case should be designed to show that. <coughs> Boolean operands within a decision condition may independently influence the result of the decision. That means the whatever I have put here is nothing but the Boolean expression having a Boolean operand as and. So we are going to verify the operands for its independency. For every test case, this should be clarified. Same like we need to have an input, what are the inputs that is going to drive. For each decision estimated by the test case in the identification of the combination of Boolean operands, their values and the result of the decision, the expected result of the test case that also need to be understood before we do the modified condition testing. So, that is about uh, modified condition testing. The next one is um, linear code sequence and jump. <coughs> this generally uh, we follow not with this name, but indirectly through MCDC condition testing, modified condition testing, we will add it, but so certain uh, specific uh, industries or applications, they prefer to have this. So, this is a software analysis method basically, used to identify structural units in the code and the, unit and the test, its primary use is with dynamic software analysis to help answer the question, how much testing is enough, that means basically it will have an analysis of how much you need to test it in terms of dynamic software behavior or analysis. For dynamic software analysis is used to measure the quality and efficacy of software test data where the quantification is performed in terms of structural units of the code under test. That means based on the structural unit and its behavior or the functionality the dynamic software analysis is <coughs> used. So, the it is used to measure the quality and efficacy of the software test data. When used to quantify the structural units exercised by a given set of test data, dynamic analysis is also referred to as a coverage analysis. So, when we are done with the dynamic analysis, we will also come up with the coverage analysis. So, that is how uh, this is done. Basically, 
to drive how much of the testing based on the test data uh, is needed is what is being derived for the linear code sequence and CSG testing. It is basically an LCSG is a software code path fragment consisting of a sequence of code that means a linear code sequence followed by a control flow jump and consists of the uh, three items basically the start of the linear sequence of executable segments end of the sequence and the target line to which the control flow is transferred at the end of linear sequence. Suppose we have function one two I am just mentioning with uh, numbers like n is there this many number of uh, function blocks or executable segments are there in the function. So, what do we do with the LCSAJ basically how much I need to test for this block is what is going to tell that is it is basically a code path a code path fragment like I may test 1, I may test 2, I may test uh, some 5 randomly 10, 20 and maybe n. So, like this consisting of sequence of code is called linear code sequence. Linear code sequence and jumping to the different uh, linear code it is called jump uh, control flow jump basically. So, what do we do? Uh, so, we have a code path fragment consisting of a sequence of code a linear code sequence followed by a control flow jump. So, we start with this and then we have a control flow jump and uh, basically the jump could be achieved with the following uh, uh, three types that is a start then end you know that we need to have a end for the function block and the target line it means uh, with the help of this target line how we have jumped to the end basically that means the target line to which control flow is transferred at the end of the linear sequence. So, with the help of this, this is used actually. This is basically used where we have uh, uh, numerous functionalities having uh, similar uh, uh, expected outputs and similar sort of inputs where we have huge number of functions. So, there it is useful. So, that is how they use it, the LCSG method. Okay, so in continuation of this, uh, basically LCSJ method uh, will have the ER. It is called as test test effectiveness ratio. So, what is test effectiveness ratio? Is the number of statements executed by total number of executed statements, number of control flow branches executed by total number of control flow branches. We have a number of LCSG executed by total number of LCS. All together, we can have a TER that is effectiveness ratio that means how much of the code we have sequenced and uh, jumped in terms of testing. So, accordingly, we will have this sort of testing. So, coverage also will take care of this. Coverage analysis metrics are used to dodge how much testing has been achieved. The most basic metric is the proportion of statements executed, test effectiveness ratio 1, TER 1. It is called as number of statements executed by total number of executed statements. Higher level coverage metrics can also be generated in particular the next level of TR2 like control flow branches it is similar to whatever addition or the branches that we have seen before divided by total number of control flow branches how much is there. So, whether we are able to test it whether we are able to see all the values. So, this TR2 will give basically with the help of the sequences whatever we have. 
done. So TR3 is number of LC total number of LC. So these matrices matrices for this show a pure hierarchy whereby when TR3 is 100 percent has been achieved it follows that TR2 should be 100 percent and TR1 should be 100 percent. So aim is to have TR3 as 100 percent so that the number of LCSJs are executed you have the total number of LCS is become 100 percent. So this is very traditionally old method so both the TR1 and 2 matrices were used in 70s and the third dates from the later 70s the requirement for achieving the TR1 100 percent was the level or method for the one it used to be called as TERs when they defined B1 unit B here TR1 TR2 TR2 TR3 like this levels of testing they used to mention based on the safety and the criticality of the emirate software they will have a definitions of the emirate software levels. Later they have added MCDC modified condition decision curve that we will study it in the next slides. So, it was added in 1992. Higher levels of TR3 100 percent has been mandated for many other projects, including aerospace, telephony, and banking. So, where there is a mandate that TR3 should be 100 percent, it means this linear code sequence jump is 100 percent mandatory. One practical problem of using TR3 is that many LCSs can never be executed due to the conflicting conditions they may contain. That means we know that we have different jumps within the sequence that is a start of the linear sequence of executable statement then the end of the linear sequence and the target line to which control flow is transferred at the end of the linear sequence. So, this basically these three units may not be executed all the time. So, it is subjective, but it is mandatory. So, here uh, you see an example of a C code and uh, for white box testing of uh, LC SAG, uh, this is an example from Wikipedia. I will just uh, use it here. We have a C code having a library included here. This is a library, this is we have a definitions of. Uh, Macros such as maximum columns, maximum row, maximum count, iterations as 750. And then we have the main here we are initializing a count equal to 0 and array totals of 26 and the value and local variable equal to 0. Then we set the memory with totals with the help of a size of that integer then we initialize count 0 then uh, what it does is uh, while the count is less than iterations that means 150 times this block will be executed value will be absolute of uh, some random number uh, modulus <coughs> maximum columns then totals array will be assigned with 1 and incremented if the total of that particular value is greater than maximum count it will assign the maximum count itself. Then the count will get incremented so that up to 750 times this will be executed else this will not be assigned. <coughs> so, with the help of this example so there is a LCSJ triples it is called as I said start line finish line jump line uh, ok. So, there are 8 LCSJs uh, numbers have been identified and uh, start line is 10 for the first 3 then we have the start line is 17 for the next 3 and uh, 7 one is 25 and 8 one is 28. So, based on this for loops weeks, there are uh, LCSAJ numbers uh, for that 
and uh, total number of LCIs is identified as 8. In the first one, we will see start line is 10 they have used, then finish line is 17. That means, suppose say 10th is a while after this they have used, 17th is the 28th line, suppose it is uh, the last floor bracket. So, within this, whatever is going to happen, they consider it as one LCSAJ. <coughs> Similarly, we have a 10 and 21. And uh, finish line is 17, jump to line is 28. That means 10 and 17. So, so this is a 10, let's say, the initialization. And uh, we have 17, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, this is the one. And uh, the jump to line is 28. So, 18, 19, 20, last one. So likewise, we are going to have start line, finish line, and jump line. So they draw a tables for this. Okay, so that is about LCSAJ. It's a quick uh, understanding where they use the TS test effectiveness ratio. Uh, with the help of LCSAJs, they use the sequences. The linear sequence of executable when it starts and when it ends, and the target line to which the control flow is getting transferred finally. So, that is how they are going to test it. And you can see some of the table talks about the start and line the same. You see, which is same here, 28, 28 is same, and so forth. That is the last one written zero, it is the same, and uh, jump to line, the last but one. Similarly, we have uh, 17, 17, jump to line is 28, the last line it will come from uh, if, oh, sorry, yes. So that is how. These three aspects should be tested in the LCSAJ type of white box system. <coughs> okay, the last one uh, being uh, I have added the purposefully this is because they use this type of testing in aerospace. So, very important to understand this. DO 178P testing. You say Defense uh, standards they use. Where uh, the different levels of safety is being uh, defined based on the criticality and the safety level of the particular MBA software and the system. So, for that type of uh, system, the D1 Senate B mandates MCDC, it is called modified condition decision coverage testing. So, uh, let us quickly see what it is. So, MCDC, modified condition decision coverage testing. <coughs> it is more used or applicable to space or aerospace service D1 Senate B process to satisfy one of the key objectives of D1 Senate B. Also called as a truth table approach, where logical expressions are being tested. So, where uh, we have maximum logical expressions, we use a truth table. So, what is a truth table? We will uh, study that in the next slide. And there is an example snapshot of uh, D1 and How it is. I will uh, just have a look into this. <coughs> So, the basically the MCDC criteria announces the condition decision coverage. We know we have seen condition coverage, decision coverage, and condition combination decision coverage. This criteria it will enhance basically by requiring uh, that each condition be shown to independently affect the outcome of the decision, same as the 
modified condition testing with the combinations it is similar to that but with the stringent process they follow it the independence requirement <coughs> ensures that the, the effect of each condition is tested relative to other conditions however achieving ncdc requires more thoughtful selection of the test cases we need to have a two table sort of a approach but uh, if you have a three variables we will end up with 15 type of combinations we do not need to execute all of them. So, that is why it is uh, very important to select a good approach and uh, select such inputs and uh, suppose in general uh, if n inputs are there minimum of n plus 1 test cases for addition with those n inputs will need to be there. Uh, for example, A or B is there, then we will have test cases. Uh, for example, MCDC, what we have independency as I said, again I will repeat A or B. Suppose this is there, then we will have some statements executed. So, A can have true, A can have false, B also can have true, B also can have false. So, what are the tests that we can do it to show the independency? So, the combinations could be TF, FT, and FF. So, that the independency is done. We know that TT is not required because it does not affect the independency and we have already tested when the A is considered as a input true and A or B will result in this true only. So, to achieve the independency we need to have the test combinations TF, FT and FF. This will provide the MCTC. You can add a true true also this is subjective again depending on that. Okay, here you can see the decision comma MCDC testing what they used. So basically, this is a, a example snapshot of Dion's NFT, the different processes and sections that it has. Uh, it uh, draws a life cycle, Dion's NFT software life cycle is called. Uh, this diagram is from one of the NASA document. You can see the reference here, and uh, we have this many blocks. We have a planning. It is spoken in the section 4. This D1 should be processed as a different sections against the each sections there is a checklist and each section will identify different aspects of the MCDC coverage and the testing process. So, we have planning in section 4, we have integral process which is nothing but evaluation and verification. Section 6, configuration management, section 7, quality assurance, 8, certification liaison, 9. Though, though this will be part of the planning that needs to be addressing. Similarly, the planning also will take care of uh, these blocks, which is dotted here. The planning will specify about development aspects. So, as part of the development, we have requirements. Section 5.1, decision, sorry, design which is section 5.2 coding it is all part of the section 5. So, 1, 2, 3 sections are about definitions and uh, other things. Section 4 onwards the D1 sonnet B has to be strictly followed for the MA software development. If it is a D1 sonnet B compliant uh, examples like uh, space and aerospace uh, industries. So, there are avionics subsystems those subsystems need to implement based on the software level that D1 and B handles. So, requirement design coding integration. So, these four sections are part of the development process that needs to be pointed out or supported with the help of planning which is in section 4. Similarly, <coughs> a very important part is the integral process it is called as which has four sections which will identify the verification process, the configuration management process, all the certification liaison. So, 
once we have this addressed that aspects of the image system is called as D1 and D compliant. Okay. Further on the MCDC. The MCDC criteria enhances the condition decision coverage criteria by requiring that each condition be shown to independently affect the outcome of the decision. Same as whatever we have studied in uh, modified condition combination uh, testing. Here, with uh, most engine D1 and D aspects will be addressed. The independence requirement ensures that the effect of each condition is tested related to the other conditions. That means we have several combinations. So those combinations because once you have the code executed and a piece of code which is responsible for some outcome will definitely need to be tested and traced. So the rest of the other piece of the code will have to be constant. So the independency of this specific block will need to be ensured. How we are going to do is with the help of independence uh, uh, testing with the condition and the decision coverage that we have. However, achieving MCDC requires a more practical selection of the test cases as we will be discussed further in the chapter 3 that is uh, there in the D1 uh, standard B. Uh, you can have a look with the following uh, link below which uh, talks in detail about MCDC. Which is not a scope of uh, this year uh, of embedded software testing because we are talking about in general all these aspects. If further, if you are interested, maybe you can go through in detail about MCDC <coughs> for aerospace, so how they have addressed. So, in general, a minimum of n plus one test cases for addition with n inputs. So, example we have done ARB, so they have. True false, false true, and false false. This will provide the modified condition decision coverage for decisions with a large number of inputs where we have a B, C, D, E, with R, and, and all that. MCDC requires considerably more test cases than any of the coverage measures discussed above. We will take some examples. Here you can, here you can see a logical AND gate. Where uh, ABC inputs are being added in this block, and the result of this is placed in D. So it is called a three input AND gate. That means there are three inputs ABC, there is an AND gate here, you can see. A, B, C is the AND gate and D is the result. So, this is how they represent uh, the different gates. So, that gate representation of all uh, part of the engineering curriculum where uh, we have R and and all the stuff represented this way. These are all typically used in the requirements and against those requirements test cases will be written. So, okay. So in this table, the whatever the number of minimum tests for these three input and gates are listed. How are they listed? Let us see. <coughs> okay, test case numbers. There are about one, two, three, four test cases are there. Sorry, three test case numbers have been specified. Uh, each of them considering one at a time. That means A as an input, B as an input, C as an input. Also, we need to have a D as an output. As the fourth condition, so those many test cases need to be excised. So, what are the tests that can have for this MCDC? First one, A, B, C are provided as T. That is true. The output will be true. Similarly, A, B, C is provided as input as false, and B as true. To the output is same. Output is false. Similarly, third one 
uh, we modify B as a false and A as true, output D becomes false. And uh, in the fourth case, the input C is uh, provided with the input as F and the output is F. So basically the output is depending on the false conditions that can be driven either through this, this, this. So is it because of C only the false has come? How we are going to exercise by providing the input C? Yeah. Suppose if the D is providing false in any case, how are you going to test for A and B? So in that case, C we need to test it as true, and in the next uh, next test sequence we are going to put A as true and B as false. Likewise, we are going to have a table. This table is called truth table. That is why the MCDC. approach is used <coughs> for such uh, expressions where we use and with or with and all. So this many tests we are going to have, one test will take 1, 2, 3, 4 values, sorry <coughs> the columns, the first one takes all the Consideration as true, second one all the considerations as different values, the output is same in the 2, 3, 4, whereas the output could be derived due to independency in either A, B, C, etc. So that is how MCDC table is drawn and the test cases are written. Let us take another example. Uh, here we will go through a three input OR gate where a, B, C are fed into an R gate and the result of the R gate is D. In the previous example, we have D gate as a, sorry, D as an output derived from the AND gate. So, what are the test cases that we can draw? So, we need to consider input A, input B, input C. In order to achieve output D, what are the conditions that we need to exercise? So, this is a table which talks about minimum tests that we need to have, okay. In the first test case, we are going to have input A, B, C all are as false, the output will be false. In the rest of the test cases, we can see 2, 3, 4, the output is always true, why because one of the input is true, right. So why it is called as a minimum? We need to understand. We may have one more, say, suppose fifth. Let us see. What is the other combination we can have? Uh, do we have true, true, false? Six. Do we have false, true, true? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so basically, which is the deciding factor here, not the false, right? The output is derived purely based on the, the output true is purely based on the fact that any of the input is true. So we need to drive any of the input, in the first case, any can become A, the second case B, third case is C. So other cases like both cases A and B true does not matter because already we have seen the output as true. So this is a minimum number of tests, of course depending on the expression condition we can have more, but uh, it is like a tedious uh, relevant uh, selection, but as far as the MCDC is concerned, we have independency need to be shown, how we are going to show independencies. For each of the input that is responsible or effective in terms of the output have to be driven. Similarly, we have seen any of the input in terms of false will result in the false as output. So it does not matter two are false or all three are false, always the result is false. The independency will be shown with the help of each of the inputs. So likewise, we can have for X or not comparators as inputs 
uh, that is uh, used in the logical uh, expressions. Maybe you can take an exercise for XOR and not. So not is uh, very simple. You know that not of A equals B. Similarly, A XOR B. You know the truth table. Uh, how to draw? Because logical expression we you know. So you can write what are the minimum tests that are needed to test this expression. The first one and the second one. So this is an exercise or today's session you can take. Okay. So that is about NCDC. It's the most important method that is used in the O infinite B life cycle process. Okay, so so that is uh, about uh, NCDC. I think we will continue the other aspects of testing in the next session. We will go through some of the words that we have added. Maybe what we can add today is uh, uh, NCDC. Okay. Uh, D1 and B machine coverage in all are part of the study only. Anything we have missed? NCSC uh, uh, is then we have uh, test design inputs, outputs, and all you know. <coughs> branch condition testing, branch condition combination testing. Boolean operands you can add. Okay. So what we do is we will add some more words today which we have studied. Uh, the is not listed. Boolean uh, expression logic. Okay, so rest of the words like branch, condition, decision, data flow, timing analysis, analyzers. I think timing analysis, analyzers, perform analysis, walking on test. We will study in the future classes. Entry we have seen. Boolean expression logic <coughs> we have gone through. Uh, and uh, now the Recent sessions we had was on LOC statements, coverage, model based testing, instrumentation, etc. I will not go through everything, but to have an understanding about MS software testing, we need to be aware of the knowledgeable of this type of testing. Okay, so let us study about. Uh, uh, of the glossary. Is uh, referred from uh, the testing standards book. Physical test case, detailed description of a test situation or logical test case containing the initial situation, actions to be taken, and the expected results explicitly defined in concrete values. The level of detail is such that when the test is executed at a later stage, it is done as efficiently as possible. So this will have the concrete uh, steps in terms of values and all that. So physically we lay, lay it out in a descriptive manner. So that is nothing but a physical test case. Plant, the environment. Plant normally they are not used, but in the production industry they use testing plant, test plant, etc. The environment that interacts with an embedded system. Precondition is a very important term. So it's an environmental uh, and state condition which must be fulfilled before the component can be executed with a particular input value. That means without the preconditions, the test following that precondition cannot be executed. The preconditions have to be there in place. Rapid prototyping is a development of test level. Uh, okay, the test level where a simulated embed system is. Tested while uh, connected to a real environment. It means uh, rapid prototyping testing 
is a test level. Uh, the system member system is simulator is uh, tested, which is connected to the real environment. It could be any host. Real time system, system where correctness of the system behavior depends on the exact moment when the output is produced. That means where the, the time is very hard, it's also called as hard real time system. Real time systems basically deal with the behavior where uh, the different uh, events that are going to happen within the image system should be happening at the right time, exact moment. Uh, for example, real time image systems, we have extra machines where a user presses one button, so it should respond within certain time or at that moment. So that sort of the systems we have a real time image system implemented. Regression testing is a very important term as well. Retesting of a previously tested test object following modification to ensure that faults have not been introduced or uncovered as a result of the changes made. That means we have found some issues in our first or primary testing and that has been fixed either in the requirements or design or in the implementation and the same tests without modifying any test test suit or test environment or the test cases, we are going to test that piece of the fixed code and uh, results we are going to achieve in terms of test being passed. Result, you know that actual result or expected result. The actual result is what we get it from the system when it is subjected to a specific test. The expected result is what being expected, which is uh, put as part of the test case design. Risk uh, is the chance of failure into damage. That means while doing the testings, testing of the embedded systems, it could, uh, based on the inputs or the <coughs> uh, robustness or the load that we have on the system, it could uh, impact the efficiency or the behavior of the embedded system and it could result in a damage. So risk is considered as a chance of failure multiplied by damage. Risk reporting, a description of the extent to which the system meets the specified uh, quality requirements and the risks associated, associated with bringing a particular version into production, including any way available alternatives. That means we have mitigation, how we can de-risk those aspects. All will be part of the risk, risk uh, reporting. So with that, we'll end this uh, today's session, and uh, we will take up the white boxes, some of the pending uh, testing in the next session.